So, let's move on to recaps because, who boy. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Wander. We're doing Wander this week. And I'm actually way behind on Wander. I think the last episode I saw was the first one with um, Dominator. Dominator? Like, I'm, oh, you're I'm way missing behind. out. Yeah, season two is awesome, man. Dominator's yeah, so de- good. Yeah, which I guess... Or, like, The Breakfast may have been the last one. It's been a, a way... A, a long time since I've caught up. Fuck. A lot of episodes. Oh, shit, like 20. Oh, my God. Yeah. But... Yeah. So, this one... Two parts, both incredible. The first both part... incredible. The cartoon... Whew. Lord Hader orders the Watchdogs to create a propaganda cartoon about his adventures to be the greatest in the galaxy. And it is... What is that studio that they're parodying? He-Man? Uh, I mean, it's not He-Man. a studio. Oh, who made He-Man? Who made He-Man? I should know this. Metal ma- Filmation. 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 I, I forgot that that was like a company and not just a shitty name for animation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to call them Metalmation, but that was the the parody studio that made the um, limousine, but they were in space cartoon, parodying the same kind of... That was more Hanna-Barbera, honestly. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. Oh, man, they, this was a pitch-perfect parody. And you know what was really cool about it? Was the entire cartoon in question was put together by one dude, Ben Ballister, um, you know... Ballisteri, I think. Ba- who was also one, of, which is also one of the uh, storyboard Sorry. artists for this one. Yeah, Ben Ballisteri. Well, yeah, he was storyboard artist because he made the cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> like they didn't even have to send it overseas. Like he showed everybody. It was full color, painted backgrounds. Everything was good, <laughs> and he showed it, and they were like, "Yeah, we'll just use this. Like we don't <laughs> have to reanimate it. Like this is perfect." <laughs> Uh, which is super cool. God, like the, the, and they the, also the got way... John Hamm to They got John here. Hamm to, to voice a... a oh Lord my Hater god, this... I had no idea. Yeah, like, um, to, uh, this is kind of funny, when Noelle Stevenson was talking about this episode on, um, her Tumblr, because she wrote The Bot, which we're gonna get to, uh, she's like, oh, this is my favorite episode we've ever written, and also some shit with John Hamm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because um, apparently in the script, he was described as having a John Hamm type voice. So McCracken was like, wait a minute. We're friends with Jack McBrayer, and he knows people. Maybe <sighs> this is our time to ask him for a favor. Because Jack McBrayer, being what he is, has always offered, like, hey, if I have some friends and connections, like, I could always, you know, try pitching the show to somebody I know. And they sort of saved it for, like, the be- perfect moment. Yeah. And I think they picked a great moment to ask for a favor. The, <laughs> Can you imagine and doing the whole in the booth doing this, yeah. this their shtick together? Like, it's oh, some of the dumbest so stuff. Like, and, McCracken and they're doing said the whole that, MST3K shot with the, the silhouettes. Yeah, that was, that was what got me. I was like, oh my yeah. god, they're doing yeah. it. Like, it's, this is going to be the whole episode. <laughs> I almost, like... I almost um, wished that they would have like like committed a hundo percent and just never cut to like a to like a face view of Hater. Like it was just their silhouettes for the whole thing. That would have been that would have been pretty great. Yeah. That would have been cool. But well, what was crazy about cutting to his face is that the transition of frame rate was actually really jarring. I'm like, it was when, really yeah, jarring. when I first saw when I first saw fra- uh, you know uh, Hater's lip sync. I'm like, Jesus, this is like 180 frames per second. <laughs> This is amazing, and like they oh. did, I feel like because like uh, there's a lot of cartoons that do the, the do the joke where they parody an old cartoon, and like I always notice the things that they don't, I, I guess quote I guess in a way get wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I always see where the modern where the modern animation is coming in because they'll, they'll always they'll always put like one or two too many frames like like it'll be it'll be like jumpy and jarring but then like one thing will be animated too smoothly and i'll be like ah you didn't fucking commit because you don't know how to animate this badly (laughs) but this was most this was like a hundred percent like perfect yeah because even the the action scene wasn't animated very well it was still cool like you could understand why kids at the time thought it was cool 
my but it was still this, basically still frames. This is the thing is back. because in in the context in the conditioning of this episode that elevated frame rate frame rate got me hyped because I was so used to nothing happening and then as soon yeah, as shit started too. happening I was like I was ready to punch the ceiling in excitement. Was, me too. It really felt like you were a kid in that era watching cartoons, being like, "Oh yeah, I oh, um, my, the best my, action scene ever." <laughs> my favorite bit though was when um was when like uh d- d- who's the shark guy? I forget his name. Shit, Commander uh, Emperor awesome. awesome Emperor Awesome. Yes, when when it cuts to him and then it cuts back to Lord the Hater and Lord Hater has his arm because it's just the same one recolored, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like an animation error. Oh, it's so oh, good. The animation like, era goofs are gold. Yeah, there's a bit later where he uh, doesn't have an arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgot to put it back there's in. a couple of those. And then when Wander's mouth is like on the other side of the screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. At first I thought the joke it's was Sylvia? that he punched the mouth. Oh, God. <laughs> Cartoon <laughs> Sylvia? <laughs> it's just the horse. Uh. It's just the horse. Oh, oh and then when no. they do the "I have the power" craziness, and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> it's so perfect, so perfect, so many muscles, <laughs> so much fur, uh, <laughs> fur. Yeah, a lot of fur. Like all the muscles, and then and then and then, and then Commander Peepers. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> They've replayed the clip a million times. Cause oh, it made man. me nostalgic, too, because even though I didn't grow up in this era, I had hand-me-down She-Ra action figures for my cousins. Yeah. So I always wondered who these muscle, hairy people were. I remember Because the like, She-Ra cause, like, were um, the same. Because in the, in the, I just remember, I, I, I saw a lot of older stuff, because in the, in, the in the early days of Cartoon Network, back when they didn't have enough, like, a ridge, a ridge content to fill 20, uh, their mm-hmm. 24-hour Cartoon Network that they were pitching, they just got, uh, like, a shit ton of old stuff. So, like, like all the Looney Tunes and even all, all the old Hanna-Barbera stuff, and then all the, all the Filmation stuff. And it was, it's, 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 it's all, it was all, it's all great. It's all great in its own weird, kooky way. Yeah. And McCracken said that, like, in every project he's ever done, there's always one episode that's just like an amazingly fun, flowing, creative process. Like it's like just delightful from start to finish. Yeah. And for Wander, this was his episode. He said for Dexter's that's Laboratory, good. it was Mach Five. For Powerpuff, oh. it was Meet the It was Meet the Beat yep. Alls. I was uh, yep. I was I was about to drop Sorry, that. Sorry, Kevin. And uh, for Foster's, it was the blue super dude and the magic potato of power. Oh, I forgot about the blue super dude. They did two yeah. of those. It was so good. Yeah, so like... He made like a really... Just... Our, he was on DeviantArt and he made like a really good, like one of those like felt like black light drawings of the blue super dude and it was so dope looking and I wanted it for real. I know. It was so cool. I miss his DeviantArt. Uh, uh, wh- uh, one thing he but said I don't on... miss DeviantArt. <laughs> no, yes. yeah. One thing that McCracken said on his Twitter, because uh, somebody asked him why they couldn't just use footage of Gravity Falls if it's the same network, and he's like, it turns out that it's actually FCC regulations that one show can't be a commercial for another. Huh. Unless it's, but I guess the regulations are different for when you get into, like, a full-on crossover. Um, so that's yeah. why they had to do the parody, but I think the parody was fucking incredible. I think the parody was, the parody was, was better. Jetson, Scooby-Doo... Bonanza. Gravity Falls. She's yeah. like, ugh, driving a van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dog now. <laughs> I don't know who's like they weren't even trying. They were just like, you all know what the joke is. <laughs> yeah. And they're and all it, good buddies. So they yeah. had a kick yeah. at it. Like Alex Hirsch was tweeting at McCracken. He's like, when am I going to get some of that animate, like some of that, those drawings? Like I need those in my life. God. Um, um, a, and this the, I'm on the Wander Over Yonder wiki. It points this out. There was Bony Con, where it was a yes, Bony Con. Because I didn't get until was... I looked at this. It was because br- I I wouldn't have thought of it. It's Brony Con. It's a con dedicated to one fucking show that just started. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's because Lauren Faust works on the show. Yeah, and like. Everything from top to bottom this episode was stupendous. Like they just and then, kept... no, no, the best one, the best fucking line 
when Lord Hare is trying to come up with an ending, he just goes, Animation is hard! People should have more respect for people who do this for a living! And then he just <laughs> stares for, like, three seconds. <laughs> yeah. I died. I died, too. And, like, they I love a Dominator's line, too, where she's like, now that's a cartoon! Like, sort of poking fun at the fact that Gravity Falls is much more beloved than yeah. Wander among internet people, and it's just kind of like... Okay, you guys, like, come on. <laughs> it it was great. It was amazing. So I was, like, like <laughs> yes. violently texting Nikki and Tooch as soon as I finished watching it. Because I watched it live right after the Between the Pines special. And I was just like, this is the best thing they've ever done. Like, everybody has to watch this. And, like, I was coming back from commercial break and I was like, man, how in the world are they going to top this? Like, <laughs> how are they going to go from there? Like, how can they get so high? And what could they possibly do next? <laughs> the bot. bot. All right. This one was written by, I think it's fair to say, acquaintance of the show. We met her at SBX, Noelle Stevenson. Um, we're not friends, but, like, she was friendlier to me than She was I polite need, to than... us when we <laughs> told her about the podcast. Yeah, she's like, oh, that sounds really cool. And then, like, see, anyway, uh, this is an episode (laughs) where, oh my god, you can, I, you can actually really see, um, Stevenson's, uh, influence in this one. An episode about, obviously, it's our favorite one, it's an episode about a robot who does his best. And it's with a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of parallels to Iron Giant. Yeah. A lot. So one of Dominator's robots, her most, her, her favorite robot, the one that she, that gets the best results is Bot 13. And she sends him out to get Volcanium X, which is, that's the stuff that, uh, like all her liquid metal. Yeah, that powers her ship and her whole operation, I guess. Yeah. So the, the, she sends him out to get more Volcanium X and he's scouting for planets and he finds this, uh, planet that's basically like, the Jersey Shore planet, but nice. This is a board. Yeah, it's the whole planet is a boardwalk. Yeah, yeah. The whole planet is a boardwalk. <laughs> and man, you know, one thing that would have. Uh, I gotta watch this again in, in hopes that, like, in the background somewhere, there's somebody who looks like Jimmy <laughs> from Qua- from Quadrophenia. <laughs> oh my god, that would be awesome. <laughs> have they made Who references before? I don't know. Uh, but man, this is the place to do it. Uh, the robot crash lands on the planet. And gets damaged a bit. Because, and, no, Wander is flying a kite, was he's it? Flying, he's flying yeah, a kite. Yeah, he's and the flying kite a kite. Get, collides gets in the with way the, the bot. Yeah, and it crash lands. And it, it gets damaged a bit and can't remember exactly what it's doing. Except it knows that it needs Volcanium X. And mm-hmm. Wander names it Beep Boop based off of the name that, based on just the first two sounds it makes after it introduces itself. And they have a yeah, wonderful. Because it loses its voice, kind of, after it gets damaged. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. His name is Beep Boop. And they have a whole day on the boardwalk being best friends. And, you know, the whole time it's trying to get Volcanium X. And Wander is, like, kind of, uh, you know, very characteristically not paying attention to what he wants and just wants to show him a good time. Well, he does uh, know that he's a Dominator bot, so he's cautious. Oh, yeah. So he's, like, yeah, that's right. trying to see if he can, you know, do. he's doing what Wander does. You know, he takes a person who's supposed to be bad and makes them and brings out the good in them. Um, and, you know, he's keeping it a secret from Sylvia, kind of, for a bit. Sylvia's taking a, a lovely beach nap <laughs> while all this is happening. And, you know, they, they have all these fun adventures. And it's it's really cute because, you know, at first the robot's very resistant. But as it goes along, it's more willing to play along. Like, when they were building the sand sculptures or whatever. Like, I thought that was really cute. The The binary... Um, yeah, portrait that the robot did because I honestly didn't expect it to turn so quickly, but it was like, yeah, no, this is great. It's a good time. Oh. And then what happens is that Wander's like, I know you wanted this Volcania X, so I want it for you. So he takes it, he uses it to rebuild himself, and he remembers his program, and he's like, okay, I found the Volcania X. I'm gonna go report back to Dominator. And Sylvia's like, ah, crap. We gotta get everybody out of here because Dominator's gonna come to murder everyone. And Wanda, 
and I was like, no, he's, we're going to see him again, and it's going to be great, and he, uh, he loves me. And, <laughs> Beep, boop. okay, so he cut, he goes to Dominator, and Dominator asks for the uh, coordinates of this planet. And while she's doing her whole pontificating, he had, Beep Boop has these flashes of his day with Wander. And he then resists Dominator. He's like, I'm not going to tell you. I, de- I'm going to delete this information so you can't have it. And Dominator is like, all right, well, then you're useless to me. I'm going to destroy you. And the last thing he says is, I am, be- my name is Beep Boop. Yeah, like he's he's falling towards a planet, getting burnt up. He's, he's turned from red to blue. He pulls out the little photo that they took at the boardwalk from the photo booth thing. Just looking at, like, I am beep boop. Just fucking Iron Giants the fuck out of there. And then the fucking end title animatic. Yeah, with the with the, <sighs> with the sand drawing. I, I legit cried. Yeah, I was, I was crying. I was rolling around on the ground <laughs> screaming Beep Boop's name. <laughs> and, like, just like, Beep Boop! Beep Boop! Beep Boop! Beep Boop! <laughs> I, like, I was actually cr- upset for like a good ten minutes about <laughs> Beep Boop. I was really, really sad. Why they did this to me. It was the scene of the waves washing away the drink. The, uh, the drawing and also just the photo in the dead of space. It was, it was really brutal and really good. It, really brutal. Yeah. And like, and then it cuts back to Wander and Sylvia and they're like, huh, Dominator hasn't come back. Um, that's weird. And we haven't seen any sign of beep boop. And Sylvia was like, yeah, you know what that means? You were right. Wander, he didn't sell us out. He was a good guy after all. And then something about, Wanders like, thank you, Beep Boop. Mm. And the shooting star. Uh, that was Beep Boop. <sighs> Beep Boop! <laughs> and the fact that his name is Beep Boop. <laughs> like, it's like the perfect name for a robot. But then when you cry about it, you sound like an <laughs> idiot child. <laughs> but Beep Boop made me really sad. <laughs> Yeah, that is oh, so good. We gotta, we gotta. I've been wanting for us too. I haven't fallen behind, and you know, in in McCracken's post about the episode, he you know wanted to reassure that like Dominator's a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> she's cool, but she's not. But she's dangerous. And yeah, evil. no, I. Yeah, well, I mean that's uh, what what he said about a uh, hater. Is that the the actual story of this show is about Hater learning to be a good guy? That's what this is. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, we we know that as it goes on, Hater is going to have a whole arc where he gets he learns to be a good guy. Maybe slowly, maybe maybe difficultly, but that's going to happen. That's not going to happen. It has Dominator. to happen. No. And we don't even know why Dominator's doing what she's doing. Like, she came out of nowhere. I, ho- I, I hope she's just a jerk. And conquered the whole galaxy really quick. And it's just like, where did she get this desire from? Anyways. You know? And, and, and it is difficult to characterize a villain, because you, you, you want them to stay a villain, but you don't want them to be too horrible at the same time. Because you still want people to enjoy when they're on. Screen. I mean, because it's like I mean, because with this, it's like I mean, yeah, she's like she she's objectively a villain, but also this is like this is cartoon violence. So like nothing she does, like is is in a real world equivalent that bad. It's just, it's it's all fun. She murdered a soul. She murdered Beep Boop. All right, let's just. He found his soul. And let's she yell at Tooch for everything he says. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's just, this is a friendly debate. <laughs> no such. Th- it's 2016. It's the it's the year of a presidential election. There's no such thing. <laughs> Blarp. <laughs> Blarp. I just get really passionate about the things I love. Okay. I mean, yeah. You, and I love. I love Beep Boop. Beep Boop's great. I love robots. I I. Who's the one with the entire podcast about them? <laughs> 
you. It's but no, yeah, but most of the time she's just like she's doing that whole shit. She's basically like a she's just a more competent Lord Hare. She's like, she's like she has that same thing of like yeah, being evil's cool. I'm the raddest. Like that's that's her shtick. Yeah, that's true. And it's like yeah, that's it's like none of it's none of it's realism. It's it's cartoon. It's it's cartoon an- antics. Oh yeah, totally. So like it's always like it's I don't know. It's just like I think I just have this like knee jerk thing when whenever people like either t- take take fictional characters either too seriously or not seriously enough like there has to be some middle ground like there, there's there's like oh no oh, no, I'm, no not. I'm, I'm not accusing you of anything i'm just speaking uh just about like oh yeah yeah like when all the people trying to psychoanalyze yeah me. or just like i guess like it's it it, it, it <laughs> stems from like this whole soap opera mentality because that's really the genre they kicked that whole thing off as a thing really just like getting way too invested yeah. in made up people written by like Duders in it in like somewhere with a t- typewriter. I don't know. Just like yeah, like like <laughs> everything everything this person does and says is fabricated by a different person. You're not mad at, and also and also it's a fictional story and their <laughs> their, their, their their deeds have no direct consequence. But it's like, yeah, but yeah. she broke up with Rob. <laughs> <laughs> she's a bitch. It's like she's an actor being paid. A really sad thing popped into my head. While you oh, were no. talking, and that Bee Boop's theme song is Sadie's little song. What? Remember Sadie's song from Steven Universe, where it's like, "Haven't you noticed that I'm a star coming into view as the world keeps turning? <laughs> Haven't you noticed I made it this oh, no. far? Now everyone can see me burn. Make that. Uh, no! Ah, someone make that a. Uh, like someone burning. make that AMV. Because he becomes a star. <laughs> Make that AMV. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Why do I love these fictional beings because so much? Because real people suck. They're well written. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know who doesn't suck? Our awesome fans. Yeah. We got some shout outs. The Slop Master had a hilarious... Uh... Oh, probably the biggest thing that happened... And relates to a lot of what other people have been sending us is that Lantern King made a goon tune that's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's of a bit, um, one of our Halloween episodes where I talk about how I was afraid of Nosferatu. Yep. As a kid, specifically the Nosferatu at the end of SpongeBob, but that's because I'd never seen Nosferatu before, and he's a scary man. Yeah. Uh, he's supposed to be a scary man, like. <laughs> But, um, and it was an amazing cartoon. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's on our Tumblr. It's on our Facebook. It's awesome. And go check out Lantern King and subscribe to them. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, and on that video, the slot master had a hilarious response where they said, you know, Nikki just sits there for ages, then loses his shit. It's all I could have, have hoped for. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way they animated you. Like, your head just, like... <laughs> You were like Guy Smiley, just looking like crazy. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I love just the little bit where I just look at Tooch when he goes, do it. <laughs> it's so I funny. love the way they draw Tooch's mustache. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's so cute. Uh, at To My Time Bomb says, honestly, without podcasts, I'd never sleep. Glad we could do you a service. Glad we could l- lull you to important. dream, ma- dream, dream man, dreamland. At Jer Gerard I said, I really like this week's episode of the Toon Goons about Akira. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my new favorite thing people are doing. It's <laughs> You'll love this week's episode about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh jeez, oh, let's see. Some let's... people were talking about uh, Star Wars stuff. Uh, Sniper Bear was talking about. K- k- this said a guy whose name I can't pronounce because it's Kukruk. Fuck off. <laughs> Kukruk. Fuck, fuck off people who run out Snag Barbarian and they're fine. Um, uh, at Duffy A sent us this really cool edit of um, the scene of Obi-Wan talking to Luke about yeah. his dad and A New Hope edited with some stuff from episode three. And I was like, this made me sad. Yeah, because I, I, I was uh, yeah, I was it, talking about that like specific thing. And like I'm glad they found it because I wasn't going to go look for it because it was on Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for sharing. That was super cool. We heard from our buddy James. I actually want to talk some more about that. Um, 
Oh, okay. It's, it's a video. It's a video called Obi Wan Remembers the Truth. If you want to uh, look for it, it's yeah, worth it, watching. It, what is what it is? It's a cut between uh, Obi Wan's you know talking about his fa- uh, his father. Oh, to- talking to Luke o- about his Obi-Wan. father from Episode Four. Yeah, and then the the final climactic fight from Episode Three, and what's interesting is yeah, it it does elevate Episode Three a bit, but like to me. What what that does is like you get to episode five and then you go back to four and then you realize what it all was because everything that it was kind of all there the idea that Obi Wan doesn't consider Anakin and Darth Vader to be the same person mm-hmm. yeah um, I mean he spells that, it out at episode six yeah, yeah it, it, it's it's really it, it's really really good and you know, you know a lot of people criticize the lightsaber fight from episode four and I get it it's pretty boring and clunky but with the added context of once you know the truth about Vader, what it is is two old, tired guys who still care about each other and really don't want to kill each other. Yeah. They, neither of them want to have that fight. Yeah. Not really. And that's no. why, that's why Obi-Wan so just gives up. Time. And Vader doesn't even yeah. like, yeah. Vader just sort of like is like, well, that happened. There goes the last of my humanity. It, it makes Obi-Wan like, it, it really does help Obi-Wan's character even more like, because with the last scene where it's just like, I loved you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no. We were brothers. <laughs> we were brothers. I loved you, Anakin. And then, and then, Chris, <laughs> and then Christian has to deliver his, his most emotional performance, but he still looks like, no, I hate you. <laughs> it's odd. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what, like, when, when the director tells you <laughs> your motivation is lava is burning you to death, I don't know how to act. <laughs> I, yeah, that's I wouldn't never know happened how to, to act. Me. I wouldn't yeah. know. All your parts got chopped off, and you're being burnt alive by lava. Yeah, um, George, this is the first scene we're shooting. What? <laughs> yeah, we're going a bit long, so I'm just gonna rattle off some names. Um, Eluxical sent us a message. Um, uh, James Ganaway, our buddy, uh, Al sent us a lovely email about how they like our podcast. Thank you. Uh, April D, sad she couldn't go to MAGFest. Sorry to Donovan. We haven't heard from them in a while. He responded. I'm going crazy with these pronouns. Please. I hope I don't fuck it up this time. <laughs> Thank you for writing back. I do really want to do You Are Umasu. Umasu. That I still want to do that. I, at some point. We will. Eventually. Um, Novu and Nova... Bugberry, like, thank you all so much for writing to us, for supporting us, for giving us advice and suggestions and schooling us on Star Wars. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. You're the best. I'm glad Eat. you liked, you like us. <laughs> and you should all, you should all make it to MacFest. Yeah, try your hardest if you can. If you can't, that's okay. We'll One be there day. next year. Yeah, we'll be there every year. Forever. Yep. Next week uh, is the week of MAGFest, so we're going to be very busy. We're going to do a... We'll see how... Ti- I'm not going to say it's going to be a Tiny Goons, but we're going to do an episode just on the Gravity Falls finale and looking back on the whole show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Though I'm not going to have time to rewatch the whole show. No. Right no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Gonna not going to have to. Uh, it, it will. I'm going to try to rewatch some stuff. I want to rewatch The Bunker, because I've only seen that once, and okay. it was very formative. Yeah. I, um, I, I'm going to try to rewatch some stuff, but yeah. I got stuff to do this weekend. And I got to shoot yeah. some pigeons and go to my professor's house to watch some queer film. Sounds shoot pigeons? That that second part sounds oh, great. Oh, with a with a Photograph? camera, with a camera. Oh, uh, yeah, that's Get what I figured because sh- you're because you're Could a vegetarian and a good photographer, so I figured it was that one. Yeah, I got to do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, um and uh so uh, pigeons are it, cute. um I like I really like pigeons now. I used to hate them, and now I adore They're them. They're great. They're great. But also, I have some uh, I have some retrospective uh, news. The next thing that's going up uh, before the uh, before the uh, SD the short the short stuff that we're doing. Um, I went over Devin's uh, yesterday, and uh, he played through. We we let's played uh, Mega Man Zero. And Ooh, um, and so uh. we we ha- we did an episode on that, but also there will be. Uh, a YouTube uh, Let's Play Is that the one series. with the terrible voice acting? No, there's no voice acting. No, that was a later X one. Uh, no. That was no. a later X game that in a scene that featured Zero, because Zero was in the entire X series. 
Yeah, I mean, I know he's. That was like he's X... supposed to be the main character. I think that was like Mega Man X Six. Okay. Ma- yeah, Mega-, Mega Man Zero doesn't have it. It was a, it's a Game Boy Advance game. It's it's it, but it's really good, right, really good right, pixel right. art, really good, like really solid, like disto. It's like. It's like the it's like the future of the future. It takes place like like a hundred or two hundred years after Mega Man X, like six, oh, wow. and um, and it's very dystopian, very like like Al the Edge, but in a subtle non Shadow the Hedgehog way. And I super dug it. <laughs> and so there's an episode about that, and then we that that will kickstart our Metrospective YouTube page, where we'll post let's plays of any video games we talk about. So yeah, yeah. that's that's all coming. Video games are fun. As always, if you want to contact us, maybe get a shout out on the show, recommend a show for us to cover, uh, let us know what you're doing if it has something to do with animation or hell, just not. We'll read anything you send us. Uh, yeah, all the ways you- to contact us are on our main website, which is our Tumblr blog, thetungans.tumblr.com, which also has an archive of all our episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, for longer form stuff, we recommend the email, which is thetungans at gmail.com. And you can also find us on Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, and iTunes, and we've got a fan-made wiki and Reddit, and we're also on YouTube, I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. Uh, those episodes are really coming along, and if any, and for nothing else, just check them out for the uh, thumbnails that Tooch comes up with. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you don't even have to watch yeah. them, because you can just look at the, you can just look at the page. <laughs> Although, please watch them. They have no views. Yeah, yeah, please. And it's the best way to go back and re-listen to things, or if you're trying to suggest it to a friend, to... Point them towards the YouTube because that way they don't have to listen to like old news, which yeah. can, twenty can, minutes of old news, which is kind which of can throw people. Off. I don't think I even put yeah, up yeah. the Comic Con episode. Yeah, no. <laughs> Why bother? No, I like, I, and I specifically also didn't save that on my computer because I had a thought like, because I had a thought like, if something happens and that gets wiped, I won't miss it. <laughs> nope. All I'll miss is all the time I spent <laughs> doing research for that episode. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hope to see you guys at MAGFest. Uh, I've been Nikki. I've been Nina. And I continue to be Tooch. And thank you for tuning in. On my way. <laughs> on my way. <laughs> on my way. Send me on my way. Send me on my way. You know what they say about the young. <laughs> <laughs> that song's on. Bye, everybody.